All right, everyone, I think we're going to go ahead and kick things off. Thanks so much for being here. Um, today we're going to be exploring the evolving OCP hardware contribution process. My name is Michael Schill, uh, Community Director at OCP. With me, I have one of the uh, co-chairs of the OCP Incubation Committee, Jeff Catlin. And I also have Cliff Grossner, OCP Vice President of Marketing Intelligence and Innovation. So let's go ahead and kick things off. Um, first, I want to take a look at the current OCP contributions and workflow so we can understand the process as it currently stands. OCP currently accepts 12 different types of contributions. You can see these here. Um, it's a variety of contributions all the way from hardware, software, documents, case studies, even all the way down to OCP-centric content such as videos or client testimonials. However, today we're going to be focusing on just one of those. Um, the contribution process, you know, how do the contributions happen? Um, they begin by being socialized within an OCP project group. Um, generally what happens is a contributor will have an idea, they'll approach a project lead or a group of project leads, say, hey, is this something that would be interesting? Is this relevant to this project? Does it fit what the project is trying to do? Does it fit within the charter? If that answer is yes, the project leads will encourage them to sign a contribution license agreement, otherwise known as a CLA. CLA is a, essentially a patent non assert agreement that protects both the contributors and those who would use the contribution. Once, oh, it looks like we lost some, oh, there we go. Um, once, uh, once that's signed, the uh, contribution will be written up according to a certain template. For specifications, which is what we're talking about today, we have a uh, 2022 version of the OCP spec template. Uh, lately, we've been churning out approximately one version a year as the process continues to evolve. You can always find the latest edition on the website. So <clears throat> once that is done, all our I's are dotted and T's are crossed, go to the final step, which is um, approval by the incubation committee. Uh, Jeff sits on that committee along with uh, 13 other folks, soon to be uh, 14 other folks with the uh, addition of sustainability as a top level project, as you heard earlier today. Um, each top level project has one representative on the IC, and then there are three co-chairs, uh, Jeff Catlin, DJ Johnny, who you heard from during the keynotes today, and Jessica Goldbrand from Intel. Um, those folks review and then vote on each contribution um, to the OSP community. Once approved, or if approved, the contribution is published. Everyone cheers. We have that lovely graphic there. It's published on the OSP website, and we can then move forward with either utilizing that contribution as a guideline or basing products off that spec or design. A more detailed look at this, um, this is our current process where a single contribution is um, done underneath a single CLA. As you can see, we have the stuff we mentioned earlier where we were discussing the concept with the community. There's revision, feedback, then IC review and approval. At this point, a final spec agreement is signed that puts the cherry on top of the contribution. It is version specific, so it limits what is being contributed and defines it very specifically. And then, of course, we have our contribution. Um, for the purposes of this uh, presentation, we're going to refer to this as a monolithic contribution, since once again, we're generally coming from one contributor or a group of contributors, one CLA, all the way through to one spec, and uh, hopefully eventually one uh, um, OCP-approved product. Um, this model is, is wonderful, and it will continue to be um, acceptable to OCP. However, we don't feel that it's enough for the current you know, evolving demands of the OCP community at large. Um, once again, do want to make an important note here. This change only affects specifications, hardware specifications, and the hardware specification architecture. It does not affect the other 11 types of contributions to OCP, um, designs, software, et cetera. That may change as we move forward, and we may look at uh, the contribution process for these types of contributions at a later date. But uh, right now, we're just covering, again, hardware specs and spec architecture. Um, yeah, so why the change? There's a fairly sizable list of reasons. Um, one is the overall process right now is not clearly defined. Um, it's not specific to certain types of contributions. Um, therefore, it's not well understood. We have a lack of overall training. Our contributors um, are oftentimes left wondering what they need to do at what time. And um, our project leads and staff, IC reps, find themselves giving the same explanations over and over with each new contribution, which is a drain on both contributors and volunteers. <clears throat> Another reason, for the most part, new versions 
or new revs, as the case may be, which pay attention to those two, that, that'll come in, into focus later, um, require as much effort by contributors as that initial contribution did. Uh, that tends to discourage folks from contributing a, a version or rev 1.1 or 1.2 since they know how much work went into the initial one. So we don't see builds necessarily. Um, most importantly, this current process does not encourage multiple different parties of contributors to come together and work together at different times. Um, since this current process is relatively IP heavy from the start, a lot of our contributors are nervous about working with their competitors from the beginning, even underneath the CLA. And so there's a lot of coaching that has to go on to encourage this open you know, development in an open forum. We're hoping that the new process will reduce that barrier to entry. All right. This is the new evolving OCP hardware contributions and the new evolving workflow here. Um, first, before we dive in, we want to talk about how this happened. Um, OCP staff and members of the incubation committee uh, saw a need, saw these gaps that we just mentioned, and uh, met together over a period of four to six months, how long was it, um, to determine you know, this new evolved process. At that point, the process changes were shared with the entire OCP volunteer leadership for a consultation period that lasted 30 days. Um, we received uh, nearly 30 comments um, and uh, worked to provide responses, address feedback there, and now have um, what, what we feel is, is a rather strong um, new list of uh, contribution process. Um, some key points here, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, monolithic approach is not going away. We're not doing away with any way that you can contribute to OCP. Rather, this is a uh, new additional method that we hope makes it easier, reduces that barrier to entry. Um, it also allows for you know, members who might not be in a position to contribute a very IP heavy spec from, from the beginning um, to still be involved. You know, uh, th think of some of your uh, ad adopters, uh, you know, th people of that nature who may not be able to put a bunch of IP at the very beginning. Um, this also allows for the creation of a new uh, hardware spec architecture. That's seen on the right there, thanks to uh, Bijan here in the front row for putting that graphic together. Um, as, you, as you can see, this, uh, this process builds out our architecture um, from just one hardware spec as it currently stood to now uh, three different specifications. A base spec, kind of a course alignment, very IP light. A design specification, design specific, you know, generally built off customer requirements that is much more IP heavy. And then finally a product spec, which is implementation specific and tied to a product. Any questions at this point before we dive into the specifics of this architecture? So again, the base spec, like I said, very light on IP content, uh, driven by market requirements. Um, for base specifications, um, since this, we are trying to encourage competitors to work together, groups that would not maybe normally work together, CLAs are encouraged to be signed very early in the process, but these CLAs can be vague. They're not tied to um, any sort of version or rev number, and, and they can be uh, fairly general and nonspecific. Uh, one of the principal benefits of this generic base spec is that it allows for multiple design specs to come from each base specification. As I said, this is supposed to drive collaboration between folks who wouldn't often work together under the current model. Um, I see someone trying to take a picture here. I can, I can go back, but I do want to mention um, these slides will be available on the OSP website within the next week or two, along with the recording. Um, so please don't feel that this is your only chance. Um, <clears throat> just a quick look at the overall workflow here. What you see in green, is the, uh, is the workflow process. Uh, the gray outside, uh, the green area, is, is just the status quo of where we are at, at that moment. Um, and Cliff, Jeff, if I skip anything, please uh, jump in. Design specs. So the design specification builds off the base spec that was previously contributed. It focuses on customer requirements rather than necessarily market requirements. You know, these contributors working on the design spec will have needed to sign that original CLA um, the design specification will then be contributed, and um, this is very important to note that this will then be version rep specific under a final specification agreement, which is tied to the CLA. So 
as previously alluded to, one notable benefit of design specs under this current model is that they can be reused. Um, you're not stuck with just one design spec tied to one base spec. So this further reduces that initial barrier to entry for contributors while also serving to drive towards a common infrastructure. Um, important to note here, as you look at, at this chart, that there's um, two different areas. The blue is uh, where the contributors have to make decisions. You know, are, are they um, working off of a uh, base spec that already exists, in which case they can jump straight to the design spec? Is, are they gonna use a different base spec, in which case they might need to include the base specification alongside the design specification? Uh, is it a revision update, or is it completely new? Once we get to the green, this is again the, the process, as we described earlier, fairly straightforward, not too different from our original monolithic uh, contribution process. And then the product specification. So this is the final piece that leads to a product. Um, for the most part, that's why we're all here. It builds on top of the design specification, which again, that's previously been contributed. Um, the overall goal is to increase the number of product specs and therefore products that are based on you know, contributions to OCP. And we have examples there on the right. Once this deck becomes available, you know, please go and, and check out these, uh, these examples. These are all specifications that have previously been contributed under the um, previous model, but serve as wonderful examples of this new process. So once the product spec is contributed and approved, the process um, under this uh, new method is, is done. At this point, uh, products can be submitted to the OCP Foundation for product recognition. It's really important to note here that this is no different than it is under the current model. Um, the OCP Foundation has always and, and will continue to be in charge of product recognition. Our, product, our project leads, our incubation committee, they um, approve, reject, provide feedback, and guide contributions to the process. Once we have product spec and, and products are being submitted to the foundation, Product recognition does lie with, with foundation and, and with foundation staff. Um, you guys uh, may have been in the room for the, the, the talk previously. Steve Helvey um, oversees the OCP marketplace. If you have any questions about the product recognition program, please talk to myself, please talk to Steve, please talk to Cliff. We'd be more than happy to, um, to chat that with, uh, up with you. I would say Bijan, but he's, uh, he's sitting in the front row <laughs> and uh, not up here with us. All right, so here's the, uh, the hardware product specification process. Once again, in blue is your decision areas. Is there a base spec? You're gonna use the existing base spec? Great, go to number two. Is there a design spec? Same process, and so on. Down to in the green, this is the product specification process. You'll note that at the end there, that's when we once again move over to the foundation for product recognition. So, what does this look like in practice? How do we put this into practice? What, what is the actual ramifications of this new process? Just some examples, this is going off an edge chassis product. So first we have the base spec, framework, course alignment, very IP light. No one has too much skin in the game, you're shaping overall requirements. The design spec, design specific, going off customer requirements, there can be multiple of these that all align to the base spec, but they're finally aligned to an eventual goal which is the product specification, implementation specific, designed towards a product. Before I go on, any questions about this new spec architecture? All right, great. All right, so some examples of uh, a new base spec breaking out that previous model that, that you saw there. Um, just give a moment to let people Digest here. Hardware design specs, again, the, uh, the idea that these can be reused and that there can be multiple design specs cannot be understated. This truly does allow for multiple competitors to come to toss in that base spec together, knowing that if there are differences of opinion, the legal agreements that they sign don't bind them to, to work together. They can, at this point, you know, create different design specs and be in co-opetition. And then examples of new product specifications, which would be tied to an individual design spec going back to a base spec. Um, 
we're definitely encouraging folks to seek product recognition, OCP accepted, OCP inspired. There are some caveats that, you know, the OCP product recognition program, um, certain members may not be eligible to receive OCP inspired product recognition that is reserved for our silver, gold, and platinum level members. All members can receive OCP accepted recognition. Again, if you have any questions about that process, please come see me, see anyone on the OCP staff. Happy to walk you through that. Gets us to here. The new CLA FSA process, it's no different than it always has been. The only difference is how, um, how, how we get there and, and, and how many uh, specs and type of specs it takes to get us there. So again, first step, sign your CLA. Under a monolithic contribution, this has to be a bit more specific. Under this new model, if you're just contributing a base spec at the start, it can be very vague, very general, very generic. We do need some base information. That's whether it's uh, the new model or the monolithic model. Present to the project community. Get your feedback. If you don't take the feedback, at least address why you didn't take it. We do want there to be a conversation and a dialogue within the projects in order to get that approval from the project leads. Then, as always, presentation to the IC. They may have feedback. They may have questions. There'll be a week-long review period, and then they move to a vote. At that point, you know, we do need you to sign the FSA, which is that final specification agreement, specifying exactly what you're contributing, why you're contributing it, and what, and what rev it is, or version. All right, implementation. Officially, we're launching this in the first half of 2023. However, we are encouraging folks to use this new process now. Um, we, we feel that it's a simple process that the IC and contributors can, can ad ad adopt to pretty easily and quickly. Um, our volunteer staff will be working with contributors to you know, help screen ideas and proposals, as always, with the idea being to steer towards modularity. Um, not implemented yet, it's still being developed um, are some new templates. As I mentioned earlier, we have spec templates on the website right now. Um, for this, we will need new templates for base specs. What are the requirements? New templates for design specs, new templates for product specs. Those are in the works. Please look to, to see those over the coming months. The website will need to be updated. Some of you may have um, already used our contributor portal, the back end of the OSP website, which allows you to upload your, your contributions. Um, Kevin Kiefer, Kevin, please stand up. Kevin is our new full-time IT manager. You may have seen him, sit down. Uh, you may have seen him on the, uh, on the big screen today. Uh, Kevin is um, going to be helping us redesign our portal to allow for new templates, new processes to be used. Um, we'll also be working to add training courses for contributors to try and eliminate that bandwidth and time drain for both you all as the community and for our volunteer leaders. An example of what that might look like is a 30-minute, 40-minute course where you go through, learn how the process works, at the end take a simple quiz, get a certification, that you are qualified to go through this process, you know how it works, and you can be an outstanding contributor in the OCP community. Any questions? Yes. Maybe a little naive question, but um, this is clearly for hardware. Um, software just follows open source kind of yeah. engagement models? Or? Yes, so um, the OCP uh, software contribution process is outlined on our website. It um, is not affected by this new model whatsoever. Um, just a quick uh, elevator pitch here. Um, we generally contribute software underneath an improved OSI license. You can find a full list on the website, and we also do have a software contribution checklist. I'm happy to, to go over that process with you. Any other questions? Jeff, Cliff, anything you want to add? Good job, Michael. Great. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.